Hi, everybody. I was feeling very bad to speak after Clive because you, Nanopores is really an amazing technology, but uh, they provide a, an, in, an interesting cue on, on, on wearables and uh, what they're used for today. And uh, so this is a, uh, an article from a, a pretty well-known tech magazine, and, um, but it asks um, an interesting question. And I would like to ask you the, the same question. You know the, the Apple Watch is being shipped today, so it's a kind of a, an interesting day. And how many of you think in the audience that wearables today are not doing a lot for people that are suffering from chronic diseases? Raise your hands. A lot of people. Well, OK, thanks. Uh, so do I. So do I. So the, uh, what, what our company uh, is, working, is working on is trying to address this problem. And uh, mm, to explain you what, what we do, I'll, I'll go back a few years. And uh, we are at the MIT Media Lab, and our chief scientist, uh, Rosalind Picard, was studying kids with autism. He was studying stress in kids with autism. And uh, these kids were nonverbal, so they couldn't express their emotions. And uh, this is a big problem for uh, uh, learning, I mean, in school for the teacher or your friends in school or your parents as well. And um, so there's a lot of behavioral problems because of this. So uh, we are around Christmas time, and uh, one of the students of Rosalind, she invented the, the effective computing field herself, so she had a lot of passion in students. And one of the students asked to borrow two sensors to put it on his little brother uh, that had autism as well. So he put it on the left, left wrist, um, right wrist. It was this one is not so fancy, I know, but I mean, it had a few electrodes that were measuring some body signals. And so he, we did a testing during Christmas, and Ross was looking at the data uh, after Christmas. They don't take a lot of holidays at MIT. And um, so she was looking that one of the right, uh, the, the sensor on the right wrist was having a huge response, while the left one was quiet. And so she thought as, that the sensor was broken. So when, when the student came back from holidays, <clears throat> it turned out that the, that the little kid had had a seizure. And um, so Ross didn't know that he was suffering from epilepsy. And so why? why they were trying to look at these little changes in body signals. They find the huge response in one of the sensors. And from there, we um, started, it began a, a study yeah, um, focused on, on epilepsy, uh, which is one of the uh, world's most common brain diseases, and uh, it doesn't have a cure. Also, something that doesn't get a lot of publicity is that it claims a lot of lives each year. And um, this is a graph of some of the killers uh, that we have in today's world. Some of the things on the right side get a lot, a lot more publicity. Um, but epilepsy is very, um, is very dangerous one, nonetheless. And so to, we, were, we wanted to work on this problem, but we had to do a lot of things first. We had to have sensors to work well in real life. So this is something that you cannot do at the hospital. You have, to, you have to track it in real life. So the sensor had to be good. Then you had to understand, as we were saying before, um, what the data mean and how can you intervene in real time and also finally provide some help in a, in a meaningful way. So we started with the first problem, and we developed a sensor that I'm uh, wearing the last version of. It's called the E4. It's a, it's a wearable that it's used for research. So it's not for consumers to see how many steps uh, you're taking during the day. It's used to study um, um, diseases in, in real life. So outside of the hospital, is that it has a few sensors, it sends the data to the smartphone, then researchers use it to do many different things. We, we didn't plan to sell it at the beginning, we just wanted the data for ourselves to study epilepsy, but it turned out that the device was good, so many people started using it in things that were far beyond uh, neurological diseases and uh, had many different applications in behavioral uh, studies and cardiovascular diseases and, and many other stuff. So it, it was we receive it, and we, we are enable today a research that wasn't really possible before because it's a side uh, of hospital which medicine is based for, based for uh, today. And um, we also went back and uh, with the data that we had, studied epilepsy uh, in, a, in a closer way. And you can see here, um, I know this is very boring, it'll be quick, I promise. Um, you, you can see a trace from the accelerometers, which is the only way that we have today to see seizures in daily life. So when you have the convulsion, and you can see these are seizures. You can see the, the red marks are the ones where the doctors have said, reading the EEG, that there was a seizure there. So you can see the difference in the accelerometers. And it's fairly different from the rest, but it's also not like it, there's not a huge difference. So you get a lot of false positives, and you don't really know when you have a small seizure, for example, uh, instead of a 
of an in intense one. And these are the sensors and um, the results from the data analytics that we do. So you can see the, the red line um, is electrodermal activity that is one of the sensors that we, that we have. And you can see the response, it's huge compared to the rest of the day. So when Rosalind was looking at the difference in stress levels, she was looking at these tiny changes and then she found out this huge response. These are uh, sleep storms, which are used in other research for, they are believed to be related to memory consolidation during the night. And um, so this research was published in quite a few places. And, and so we, I mean, it took a few years, of course, and uh, we went from slightly uh, <laughs> work in progress devices to uh, less crappy one all along. And, um, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't easy because the sensors were quite big. And so we wanted, <clears throat> We didn't want to have an ugly medical device like everybody else's. We wanted to, because these are people, I mean, they suffer um, much more than normal people. They're healthy people. They were these beautiful devices that you can buy at the Apple store. Why, sh why should they have uh, ugly looking stuff? They should have more beautiful stuff than, uh, than the people that are healthy, uh, actually. So we, we went on and, and tried to design a medical device that was also uh, beautiful. And um, so we, we designed a device that is called the, the Embrace. And, uh, it's a watch. Uh, basically, it's a very, very simple device. And uh, it has a ring of LEDs that tells you the time. And, uh, and then it has a few sensors that uh, track what your body is doing in real time. And it also has a vibration motor uh, that alerts you when something is happening. And uh, this can be a seizure, but it can also be something else. And uh, so it has qu quite a few sensors. Uh, no, it's, it's uh, very small. Uh, it, so this vibration motor has a primary goal. And um, when, when the device is a seizure, it alerts your smartphone and then in, uh, in turns talks to your caregivers. Um, you can, uh, people that live with epilepsy, they, they have people that follow them. And um, their lifestyle today is very disrupted because if, if imagine you're a mom and you have a child that has a epilepsy, you, ha you cannot sleep in another room at night because if the kid has a seizure and you're not there, it's a risk. And um, so th this is, you can imagine, what it means for people living with this condition. So the fact that you can have something that automatically can track what's going on and alert people in, in, uh, that are in need, even if your kid is in college with, with his roommate, it, it's, it makes quite a difference. So that, that's the primary goal that we designed the Embrace for. We also designed it so that people that live with this condition could have data that was not available, that were not available before. Today, people with epilepsy have to mark the seizure on a paper diary and uh, they forget more than 50% of the time that they had a seizure or how long it lasted. But this is important because then they have to take the information to the doctor, which give, mm, gives them uh, drug dosage. So, I mean, it's not the best, most efficient system to <clears throat> today. So, uh, with Embrace, you can collect data 24-7 uh, and then relate them to the seizure. And so, we believe that uh, with time, we'll have enough information to be able also to understand the patterns that lead to seizure uh, more. And today, there's a lot of research that shows that if you have a lot of stress, if you have sleep disruption or eating disorders, it affects the likelihood of getting seizures. <clears throat> so you might think that we could just wait, do the FDA approval or the CE Medical, get insurance reimbursement, and then sell it at a higher price. Uh, the problem is that when you when you're working on such a condition, you kind of have a sort of a pressure to get the, the technology as fast as you can in the market. So we, we ran a crowdfunding campaign instead uh, on Indiegogo in, a, in partnership with the Epilepsy Foundation. And, um, and we also did something else because I am a bit concerned that the new technology all, always goes to uh, reach people, the early adopters first. I mean, there's probably many in this room. I'm an early adopter myself. And um, so what, what we did, we partnered with private donors so that for each device that was sold during the crowdfunding campaign, one could be donated to a child that suffers from epilepsy and it cannot afford the device. And, um, and that was a way to uh, give new technology to people they need it, not just because they can afford it. Um, right away. And but we, we feel very good um, about that. We're also trying to do something that uh, goes beyond epilepsy. I mean, if you don't have epilepsy, you can use the Embrace anyhow to track uh, your daily activity. And um, so we want to build an interesting experience for people that are suffering today. And, uh, and these, these sensors are useful also in many other realms, and uh, we enable a lot of research, as I was saying, in, in other places. And we also like 
to build an experience, uh, both for the people that are living with a serious condition, and that's something they, they haven't really had before. I mean, they just have to uh, live with it and uh, get whatever device they are, they're provided by the, by the medical companies. And uh, so the, th there's also a way to share the data when you know what they mean, and uh, you can intervene and you can make decisions. So it's, it's a way to build an experience with your family, with your loved ones, uh, with your friends. And, um, and we believe there's a lot of many other applications in the future for this. And um, of course, this, I mean, as you might have guessed, it doesn't happen overnight. So we started a, a very tiny company, um, which is based in, in Milan, in Cambridge. And we also do the production in Korea, uh, which I don't recommend because it's very far away. And, um, and uh, there's, so I'd, I'd like to thank also the, uh, a lot of passionate people that really believe in, um, in this project. And um, as you might imagine, there's, it, it, you require a lot of passion to, uh, to work on this. So th thank you very much. So you're wearing a device, Matteo. What is this tracking? Tell, so, tell us what we're learning about you. It's tracking too much. No, the, the, um, the, this is the research uh, device. So now, um, when I look at the data, when I, when I get off it, it will show that I was freaking out because of the audience. <laughs> and, uh, but, yeah, but at least I can compare when I speak publicly. I can see how much am I freaking out uh, from one talk to the other. Um, and, and this one is the Embrace. It's one of the um, early prototypes. It's very and, uh, light and very elegant. Yeah, this is the Italian design. So I ask because the, <laughs> the design... The designer wanted to have the camel and the sand one for the American market. They say, look, give me like a blue one and a silver, and a, you can do whatever other color you want. I'll uh, just keep this one. So we're, we're talking about helping track um, epilepsy in predictive yeah. ways. Based on what you know about what sensors can deliver now and where they're likely to go soon, what other medical conditions do you think wearable devices like these could be helpful with? So the, there's many conditions. What, what we uh, try to focus on, because it's, it's a lot of work and a, you know, a company has to stay very focused, we, we tend to focus on neurological diseases. And um, there's <laughs> other things that we're working on, uh, pretty much in the same use case of epilepsy uh, that we'd like to do in, uh, in the future. And there's autism, which actually lead to the epilepsy discovery. Uh, there's also depression. Uh, there's chronic pain. There's uh, general stress and uh, sleep disorders. and um, Anxiety, and, uh, but, but the devices are used also in, I don't know, in treating post-traumatic stress disorders or uh, Alzheimer's, so th there's many other applications, but of course it takes a lot of time to, because you have to do the research uh, very well, and then the, the medical approval, so it, it takes uh, quite some time. But we, we chose to go the, um, the consumer path first, so that we can enable people to have something today, um, so that they can, like, we can help them. And what sort of price point are the devices now? Oh, $200. Um, that's it. Last uh, question. What's the toughest challenge you've faced so far in trying to take this sort of product to market? Uh, I would say that there's different challenges at different uh, stage of the life of a company. And um, so at the beginning is finding the people, uh, convincing a lot of people. Um, sometimes the most talented engineers, they're very adverse to risk, so they don't want to join like a tiny company that's trying to do something that nobody has done before. And, um, and then manufacturing also is a, is a big challenge because, of course, uh, it's easy to say that you want to do something beautiful and uh, that is medical quality, but then you have to actually deliver. So that, that takes a lot of uh, complexity. Uh, but it's very fascinating. I mean, the, the size that we were able to, to get today uh, for the sensors, I mean, it's never been available. So we, we never had this data before. So it's very fascinating what we could do in the next year. Great. Well, best of luck, Matteo from Empatica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.